As we turn from the bronze altar, we know that by the blood of Christ we may, quote, draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, Hebrews 10.22. However, before entering the sanctuary, we find another piece of furniture made of bronze where, as Hebrews 10.22 continues, we have, quote, our bodies washed with pure water. This is the laver. Quote, be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord, wrote Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. So, quote, you shall also make a laver of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it for Aaron and his sons, verses 18 and 19. Bronze was used for furniture that spoke of judgment, where God sets matters right. The bronze altar spoke of justification, the one time putting away of the guilt of sin by blood. But the laver spoke of sanctification and the cleansing we need in fitting us for service. Quote, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5, verses 25 to 27. These blemishes on our character, being impatient, unloving, judgmental, etc., must be changed as we allow the Spirit to apply the Word to our lives. The laver, or basin, was crafted from the polished bronze hand mirrors of the women, Exodus 38, verse 8. We can view ourselves as we think we are or as the Lord sees us to be. When we get His perspective, we must then respond as James writes, quote, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. James 1, 23 to 25. The Lord explained to Peter the difference between the initial bath the believer receives at conversion, pictured at the priest's consecration, and the washings needed to be fit for his service. When Christ attempted to wash Peter's feet, at first he resisted, until the Lord explained it was necessary to have fellowship with him. Then give me a bath, said Peter. Ah, you've had your bath. He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, said the Lord, John 13, 10. When we first trust Christ, we have our bath and are brought into an unchanging relationship with him. But fellowship, enjoying that relationship, is regular washing when the convicting word helps us to be honest about ourselves with God. We can minister this to fellow saints. Quote, the washing of water by the word, Ephesians 5.26, by getting down, putting our own hands into the word and practically applying it to others. Yes, we quote, ought to wash one another's feet. John 13, 14. In encouraging Titus to be patient with the Cretans, Paul reminded him of the improvements they had needed. Quote, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, 
through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Titus 3, 3 to 7. How good it is to be clean.